Welcome back to another episode of My Legacy Garage. This time around, part two on the 1984 Ford F-150. It's got the 300 straight six in it. We know it needs a damper, it needs some brake line work, it won't pick up fuel from the fuel tank, and the rear spring shackles are mighty rusty. Plus, it needs a bath in a bad way. So here's what we're gonna do. Step one, we're gonna make it run. Step two, whatever we decide to do next. So let's do step one and hopefully it still runs. It hasn't been that long, has it? I don't know, six months or something? It was sitting back here and I pushed it up here with the tractor just to get it out of the weeds so I could look at it a little better before I decided I was gonna do something with it. And now here we are, it's in the middle of the yard, so I gotta do something with it. All right, let's get to it. There's that big beautiful 300 straight six. It's probably the best engine Ford ever built. Maybe arguably the best engine ever built. Either way, this one does run good, but it does have that damper assembly issue up there. If you haven't seen part one on this truck, you should check it out. It's, it's worth watching for sure. The truck itself is, I mean, it's dirty, but it's not in bad shape. It's been sitting back here between other projects for the last like six months or so, and I Push it out of there with the tractor today and mowed and cleaned that spot up so it can either go back there or something else can go there. And in the meantime, we've got this to deal with. So let's get a battery put in it, fuel hooked up, and see what happens. Has anybody bought one of these Econocraft batteries from AutoZone? I just went over and picked it up because I sold that white Ford truck with my spare battery in it so I don't have a battery to start anything. Speaking of which, if you haven't seen that video, go take a look at it. That 79 Ford F-150, that was a cool truck, and that video didn't do well. I'm not sure why, but it's worth watching for real. Anyway, they said, oh, you don't want to buy one of those Econocraft batteries. I said, why not? Oh, they're not good. They're garbage. They bring them back all the time. And I was like, well, how long is the warranty period? 90 days. I said, well, I'm going to sell the truck before then, so that works for me. I guess the moral of the story behind the battery is why do they sell a battery that they know is junk and have to do returns on all the time? Either the manufacturer of the battery needs to get their act together or they need to just quit carrying them. All right, there's a battery. Let's see if it cranks. Sweet. This truck, for whatever reason, will not pick up fuel from the tank. It will, however, pump it out of this through the fuel pump into the carburetor. That works for me. I'm not picky. Go ahead and get her primed up here and it should fire right off, I would think. It hasn't been that long since it ran. Here goes nothing. Step one, check. It runs. Now, to move it up to the shop before it overheats, because no water pump or anything without those pulleys moving on the front of the engine. So, let's do that real quick. Man, it would be really swell if I could at least sort of see out of this. All right, yeah. No brakes at all, straight to the floor. Good to remember. Oh, no power steering either. Let's try this with two hands. Made it. I've 
done a little bit of digging on this thing to figure out the brake problem and the fuel problem. And it turns out they're related. Weird, I know, right? Let me show you what I found and then it'll make more sense. Now, what you're seeing in the foreground right there is the fuel line coming from the tank. You see the rubber line right up there. It's rusted off and uh, the brake line right up above it there that you can see is all shiny wet with fluid that I stuck in it to find the leak it's it's also bad in the same exact spot and uh, you know the frame doesn't look too hot right there either not sure what was going on there but that's definitely a bad point either way that's rear brakes but I don't have any front brakes either and the front brake problem is actually the hose and metal looks like it probably rust jacked in there and separated and it's leaking fluid out right there all over the caliper so that's why there's no front brakes that's going to be a neat trick to fix because that line where it touches to the frame there it's not looking too hot as you can see chances of that coming apart with ease are basically zero now we know the two issues with fuel and brakes which are not necessarily easy fixes but at least straightforward the other issue is this uh, damper assembly we've got right here I already got it because I know that's what's wrong with it. Now we just gotta put it on. Y'all ever work with fan clutches with the like reverse thread nut that goes on the front of the water pump and you gotta use an air hammer to get it loose and all that stuff? Yeah, that's, that's what it's got. There it is. That's gonna be no fun. I'm wondering if I might be able to get a wrench on those nuts there on the pulley and just take it off that way. It'd be a lot easier. And I can take this shroud off and then take that off and then I should have access to get to that damper pulley down there I think that's the route we're gonna try first because I don't really relish the idea of pulling the radiator and everything else out of this thing let's give her a shot and see what happens so I started pulling these bolts right here out thinking I could take this whole assembly off of here but that's not going to work. If you can see this flange right here, this pulley spins independent of the fan. So the pulley can spin without the fan spinning. And that's so that your water pump runs, but the fan doesn't necessarily have to spin all the time. At least that's the way it looks to me. I've never messed with one of these before, but I'm pretty sure you have to use an air hammer on this nut and bust this loose and that'll take the fan off. And then you can worry about getting the pulley off. Let's look that up and see if I'm right. So apparently there are special tools with which to get this fan clutch off of here that I don't have, of course. But I decided, worst case scenario, I can try and borrow one from the local auto parts store, or I could try taking these belts off, getting underneath of it, and seeing if I can just get it off with the fan in place. It's probably not gonna be any fun, but at least it would be done. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can Loosen up these belts. Oh boy. Alright, that moved. Alright, there's one. Now we're cooking with gas. There we are. Ta-da! There we have it, folks. Part of the damper assembly is still on the end of the crank there, but the other part of it is right there. And hence that was the problem. This rubber isolator in here is gone. Here you can see this new one beside it, and this rubber right in here is what went bad in this one and just disintegrated and is completely gone so this was staying stationary on the outside and this inner piece that's connected to the crank that's in here was just spinning inside of this and not turning any of the accessories so now we got to try and get this piece off of the crank that might be a tomorrow project but we'll give her a shot here real quick it's looking like it's going to be pouring down rain here before too long I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, HIPAA. They manufacture quality automotive parts and small engine repair parts. Their motto is, machines can be easier to fix. And if you look at their website, you'll believe it too. Organized, easy to order, easy to find the parts you need, they want to help you. They specialize in providing consumables for small engine repair. Trimmer line, mower blades, chainsaw chains, you name it. In addition to that, they offer automotive air filters and oil filters to keep your daily rides on the road as well. They sent over some products to take a look at, and I was shocked, honestly, at the quality. It's really quite good. From a maintenance kit, which is a new carburetor, fuel line, fuel pickup for a trimmer, to a chainsaw chain, 
spark plugs, fuel filters, air filters, oil filters, even an air filter for a tractor, a subcompact tractor. They've really got it all. Thank you again to HIPAA for sponsoring today's video and helping DIYers everywhere get the job done. Check out the link to their website in the video description. Now, back to the video. Welcome to several days later. I ran out of time the other day. It was going to rain. It was sitting outside. And it did rain actually last night too. But I went ahead and just nosed the truck into the garage so that I can work on it on cement instead of rocks because that's a lot more pleasant. I would put it, you know, all the way in the garage, but there isn't room. Anyway, we're gonna have to at least lift the radiator up to get this thing out of here. Let me show you why. What you are looking at is the remnants of that damper assembly on the front of the engine. The issue is you can't just put a ratchet on there and pull that bolt out or an impact or anything because there just isn't room and the engine just turns. So it almost has to be an impact to take it out of there. I think what we need to do is pull the radiator and just lift it straight up enough that we can go right through the front right here with an extension and get on there and bust that bolt out of there. I think we can do that without unhooking everything. Let's give it a shot. It looks to be as simple as removing four bolts up here to take the radiator brackets off on top. And then we'll have to figure out a way, maybe some wood or something on the bottom to block it up on the sides, which should give us access through the center to get that bolt out. Now all we have to do is lift this up high enough to do what we need to do. We'll block it with a piece of wood on the bottom to hold it up out of the way. We should be good to go. Ta-da! And just like that, we have access to the bolt through the front. With the piece of wood holding the radiator up, which is hanging out right up there. So let's get some extensions together, probably a swivel, a little hope and a prayer, and we should be good to go. All right, compressor's pumped up to full. Let's give it a shot. Well, why doesn't that surprise me? Let's try the other impact, although I'm pretty sure this is the weaker one. Like I said, it's not going to work. I guess the next logical thing to do would be soak this down in PB Blaster and see if we can get it to break loose. I guess we'll give it a shot. Well, if that don't do it, I don't know what will. I have some bad news, folks. Really bad news, actually. While I was waiting for the PB Blaster to do its thing up there on the uh, damper pulley, I decided I'd go take a look at the fuel line issue because man it'd be nice not to have to have the boat tank in the engine compartment there to move this thing around. And that's when I started really looking under this truck, which I haven't done before. And I really should have quite some time ago. This is a real bummer. All right, let me go show you what we have going on down here. So I knew that this truck had rust, you know, and some supports and stuff there. And, you know, on the frame, there's, there's rust, but I was like, oh, that's not so bad. And then I saw the transmission support there. That cross member is, it's pretty badly eaten up. I mean, there is, there is not much holding that thing to the frame on this side, I'll tell you that. But it doesn't end there. I knew that this spring shackle was rusty, but that's you know, really bad. And so is the frame that's no longer attached to the bumper bracket. And that frame member is looking thin. The cross member is basically just a hope and a prayer. Yeah, she's pretty bad. Now then, that's not to say that it couldn't be saved. It, it could. You could weld patches in that frame in the back and put new spring shackles on it and reinforce some cross members maybe. I don't think you can get repo cross members, but maybe you can. I don't know. Either way, what I'm getting at is this truck is not an expensive truck to begin with. And if I go dumping a bunch of money and time into this thing, Where's, where's the point of that, right? Because the goal is to sell this to somebody who's going to put it on the road and use it. That's always my goal. I don't think that's going to happen this time around. Now, the engine runs good. It needs that damper assembly on it. But it does run good. And the transmission shifts good. 
at least first and second. That's all I ever got it into. I think that this is probably going to end up being a parts truck. It does have a pretty decent interior, so it does have that going for it. The dash is a little bit smoked, but you know, the rest of it's not so bad. Door panels could be cleaned up. Seat with a seat cover on it would be pretty good. If somebody was looking for an original radio to restore it, you know, it's got that. It looks to be about 94,000 miles on it. But then there's things like this, and that would require a good bit of work to fix and make really, you know, usable. I guess that what I'm getting at is that's going to be the end of the road for this truck on this channel. We're going to go ahead and slap her back together. I might wash it. We'll see. And then we're going to try and sell it as is. I'm not even going to put the damper assembly on it because that thing was like 100 bucks. So I'm going to see if I can return that and see if this truck can go to somebody that can use it to help get theirs back on the road or maybe use one that they have to help get this one back on the road. Either way, it's not gonna happen here. It's all back together. Let's give it a quick bath so it looks a little more presentable and then uh, put it up for sale. Why am I going to clean a truck that I've deemed I'm not going to repair? Because I can. clean ish i mean at least i can see out of the windows to move it around now because i'm gonna tell you what that was a real challenge especially without brakes you don't know if you need to stop or you should keep going because you can't see where you're going and if you have to stop you can't stop anyway because there's no brakes it's a bummer this one didn't go the way that we had hoped it would i had hoped this thing could go back on the road relatively easily but you know they can't all be winners sometimes you drag a truck out of a field and it's a lot of fun and sometimes it just is too far gone. That'll do it for this episode of My Legacy Garage. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you leave us a like. Let everybody know, hey, it's worth watching. And if you really, really enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and see what we get into next. There's quite a few things sitting around here that need some attention. Um, there's this old Biscayne back there. I don't know. Somebody had mentioned they wanted to see that. There's the Jeep still. And then there's this diesel rabbit over here that I need to do something with. And I'm hoping that I get a little more time here to get into all that stuff. And we'll see you on those. Thanks.